Good morning, good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions today with Pastor Sutton. It is Thursday, March 2nd. We made it past the 1st of March. All that snow, all day long, off and on, snow. And and towards the end of the day, the slippery stuff. Um, you know what I'm talking about. It's that fine snow that comes down and it, and it, and it, it, it you know, the big snow, it kind of clumps and you pack, and for the most part, yeah, it's winter driving, which you, it's okay. But the fine stuff, it comes down and it, it forms into ice. It's that snow that comes down at, at 31 degrees, um, but it's fine because it's really cold in the upper atmosphere. And that made the driving last night a little bit on the slick side. But we still had our midweek service last night for Ash Wednesday and our soup dinner it was uh, delightful, uh, wonderful. It was a good, good night, uh, good soup dinner. And, uh, very, very, very pleased with that. And uh, this morning we woke up to cold. It was like 13 degrees when I crawled out of the, out of the bed and uh, the sun was shining bright. Oh, was it bright, 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 bright. Um, and still is today. It's it's going to be a, a beautiful uh, sunshiny day, I think. Which is kind of the way it goes in March, right? One day, terrible. Next day, beautiful. Uh, we did it. Monday was, was snowing enough that it canceled school. Tuesday was 40 degrees. Wednesday, it looked like winter all over again. Today, it looks like the beginning of spring again. So my hope is, my hope is, in like a lion, out like a lamb. So my, my hope is that the end of March, we see some some good weather. Um, although the more snow we get, the better the, the lakes around here will fill up again. And some of them were, were on the low side. So we kind of kind of need that. So good morning. Glad you're here with me. Today's my day up at Harshaw. Once I'm done here, I'll head up to the, to the uh, uh, Faith Lutheran up there. Uh, for the day, and we'll have our Bible study and our midweek service and all that good stuff up there. So, uh, yeah, so good morning, good morning. Let's see who's here with us on this Thursday morning. Geraldine and Neil, good morning. Jerry, good morning. Uh, overcast and 42. Okay, well, you're not getting the snow that we had then. Um, just have to see what comes of that. Ann, and good morning to you. Yeah, enjoy the sun. No kidding, right? Get in front of a window like a cat and just lay there and, and absorb the solar energy. And Connie and Robin, good morning. Looks like a beautiful day in the North Woods. Yeah, yeah. And if you're dug out, we'll have church tonight, Connie. Jill and John, good morning to you guys. Verna, good morning. There's Bob and Jeannie in Kentucky. Well, you haven't made it home yet, but you're getting close. The gas is two eighty nine in Kentucky. Wow, that's still too high, but it's better. It's better. Better when we got around here. We're we're uh, here in in uh, North Woods of Wisconsin. I paid three fifteen uh, less a six cent discount uh, at at our uh, one of our grocery stores in the area that has a program, um, but everybody else in town was three twenty nine. Um, I don't know. You know, Bonnie, I was going to tell you, I think, I wonder if Dave's getting rid of their gas because the premium, the other two grades are blocked off and they're staying at that lower price. So maybe they're getting rid of their pumps, but um, they were bought out by another grocery chain. And I don't know if that grocery chain really does the fuel thing. So Kathy, good morning. You like the hymn this morning. Wonderful. Wonderful. Mushtaq, good morning and evening to you. And there's Bonnie chiming in. Okay, she says we're at 17 now um, with, with beautiful sunny skies again. There's Renee. Good morning, Renee. I keep refreshing and more of you show up. So uh, I think I'm going to get underway here, though. So let's, let's, get, let's get to this. If you have the Lutheran Service Book, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, as always, I have my treasury of daily prayer right here that I... I work out of with that same service on this beautiful and sunny day. I, I just feel good when the sun is up, you know? Um, I think I think Eden was probably sunny. Um, in fact, I, I, I actually, shh, don't tell anybody. Well, 
I, but I don't I don't think it actually rained um, until the time of the flood. I think that that most of the plants were watered um, by morning mist. Uh, each morning a, a morning mist sufficient to feed the plants, um, which makes the flood even more horrific for the people of that time because they'd never seen rain or thunderstorms. And I there's no biblical basis for that other than in the beginning there was a mist on the ground and um, there's never talk of rain until the time of the flood in the scriptures. So I don't know. I just it would make the flood even more terrifying, like I said, to the people of of Noah's time. All right, let's get into this. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today, Psalm 100... Push that button again. Psalm 107, verses 23 to 32. Psalm 107. So, all right. Yeah, that's right. Psalm 107. Some went down to the sea in ships, doing business on the great waters. They saw the deeds of the Lord, his wondrous works in the deep. For he commanded and raised the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves of the sea. They mounted up to heaven. They went down to their depths. Their courage melted away in their evil plight. They reeled and staggered like drunken men and were at their wits' end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad that the waters were quiet, and he brought them to their desired haven. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of men. Let them extol him in the congregation of the people, and praise him in the assembly of the elders. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The quieting of the sea. You know, I, I'm not prepared to dig into this psalm. This is one of the times when I'm reading it, and it's like, well, I wish I'd, I'd done a little background on this. But again, the purpose of this is not to to dig into the scriptures in a, in a, in the way of study and, and writing a, a thesis on it, um, but simply to, to rejoice in the word of the Lord. But when it speaks of these things, this is a psalm. This, this should be written certainly pre-Christ. Um, 107, probably time of the, uh, time of the Kings. Um, but it's, it, but it almost is talking like it's the, it's the events of the um, um, the events of Jesus on the Sea of Galilee, which I think is probably in our reading today. Um, yeah, it's in our reading today, which is why they paired it with it. Um, but you know, then again, the same kinds of events happen with Jonah, right? Um, it isn't that God speaks to the storm to be still. Well, I guess here it says he made the storm be still. Um, but in Jonah, when uh, Jonah's um, not going to Nineveh, but going the other direction on the boat, the seas become stormy. And um, um, when Jonah convinces the men to throw him overboard, the sea becomes still. Um, yeah. But he is the one who causes the sea to be stormy and the waves, uh, and also causes it to be still. All right, let's move on to our our reading today. Uh oh, something happened here. Um, I made some changes, and I think think it caused some problems in my controller here. Um, yeah, our reading today, Mark four. Verse 21 through 41. Mark 4, 21 through 41. 
Um, and the Lord is speaking here as we begin. And he said to them, is a lamp brought in to be put under a basket or under a bed and not on a stand? For nothing is hidden except to be made manifest, nor is anything secret except to come to light. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. And he said to them, pay attention to what you hear. With the measure you use it, it will be measured to you, and still more will be added to you. For to the one who has more, more will be given, and to the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. The earth produces by itself first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe at once, he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. And he said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable shall we use for it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which, when sown on the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds in the earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants and puts out large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables he spoke this word to them, and they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them without a parable, but privately to his own disciples he explained everything. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took with him in the boat, uh, just as he was. And leaving the crowd, they took, took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and it was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> um... So we have one parable and a warning to listen. And then we have two kingdom parables. Um, and then the calming of the storm. So taking these piece by piece, well, is a lamp to be put under a basket or under a bed? Well, no. I mean, it, even to the hearer of the time, that would sound silly. You know, if you've got a lamp, why would you why would you cover it up? And what's the purpose of a lamp? The purpose, the purpose of the lamp is to light the area that it's in. Uh, so why why would you cover it? it would be silly. Uh, if you have ears, let them hear. Well, well, the hearing here. Hey, good morning, Glenn. Um, the hearing here is the word of God, of course. Christ is speaking from His mouth comes the very word of God. Um, and you, a, 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 uh, the lamp is our faith, right? If we've been given the light of the world, which is Christ Jesus, then why would we try to hide it? Right? The, like like the, the man who is uh, cured of his withered hand, you, you, the, the faithful can do nothing but speak. You have to, it's, it's in you. It, it's, it becomes the nature to speak. You can't hide it. Don't try to. It would be silly to do it. <laughs> it. It comes up on my Facebook feed periodically or through YouTube videos, but some of you may know um, the, the comic magician's pen and teller. Um, teller is the quiet guy, pen's the big guy, pen, pen Gillette. And Penn has made the statement, he's an atheist. He's a, he's a confirmed atheist. But he makes the statement... If you truly believe that there is a afterlife, that there is a paradise that comes through a divine entity, 
how much must you hate somebody to not tell them about it, right? I mean, he, he as, a, as an atheist, it's amazing to me. Hey, Deb, good morning. He, he shames those of us who would remain silent, who would put our faith under a basket, who would hide it. He said, how can you not proselytize? He said, I don't, I, he's the, it's, and, and he said, as an atheist, he said, if I don't believe, what do I care if you proselytize? And shame on you if I don't believe for not trying to tell me about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got to share your faith. First of all, it's, it's natural. It's in you to do so. But secondly, Penn is right in this. How much do you have to hate a person to not tell them about the promise of eternal life in Christ Jesus? They may not want to hear it, but that's, that's not the deal. Just be, in fact, the truth is, anyone who is unregenerate, who is, who is unbaptized, who's not part of the church, doesn't want to hear it because the old nature in us hates God. Even some, even some who are baptized into Christ and have heard the word don't want to hear it. The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and he knows nothing. And it's true. And this connects to the parable of the uh, the parable of the sower that we had yesterday. But it is maybe a little simpler. If, if the word of God is scattered about like seed, it takes root where it will. You know, science is an amazing thing because right now science can tell us just about everything we need to know about growing uh, plants, right? I mean, we can, we can take a, a specific plant that grows in a region and I can tell you what kind of soil it needs, how much moisture it needs, how much daylight it needs, um, what the acidity of the soil needs to be, um, how much of various chemicals need to be in the soil, how to make it bloom better or how to make the roots grow better. Um, I can tell you everything you need to know to grow that plant, but the one thing I can't do is tell you how it germinates. I can tell you what the conditions need to be through observation, right? Um, they, they can put the seeds in soil and create the appropriate conditions and say this, this seed germinates perfectly or best under these conditions. But I can't tell you why this seed germinates and this one doesn't. Perhaps I can cut it apart and find out that the, there was something wrong with the cell, fallen nature, with it, with the, with the seed. It's it's the fallen nature of the world. But I can't tell you what it is exactly, precisely. I'll tell you about how the sugars break down and 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 how the moisture is causing that, and how the casing breaks down. But I cannot tell you what makes that seed stop being a seed and start being a plant. Just as I can't tell you, just as science can't tell you, the point at which two, uh, two human cells, the sex cells, come together, and at what point those two, I can tell you all, what all the processes are, but I cannot tell you what makes those two cells coming together you or anyone else. That's God. The seed sprouts and grows who knows not how. And faith is the same way. He hears the word and believes man knows not how. Right? Why some and not others? Well, I can't answer the question. God won't tell us in the scriptures, but some believe and some won't. But if the seed is never planted in the soil, if the word is never proclaimed, they never will. But when the green is ripe, when the time is right, when the time is fulfilled, when the harvest is ready, he puts in the sickle. And the harvest has come. Right? When does Christ come back? When the harvest is ready. When? I don't know. When the harvest is ready. What can we compare with the kingdom of God? What parable shall we use? Like the grain of a mustard seed which is the, at, at that time, is the smallest seed known 
to people. But when sown into the ground becomes the largest tree, the largest tree in the garden, large enough that birds take shelter under it and build their nests in it, that you come out of the heat of the day and, and hide under it. That's, that's what faith is. The, the smallest act of kindness, of loving the neighbor, of speaking the word, of, of at the right time, in the right place, when the conditions are proper, can sprout and grow faith. And you never know how big that faith is going to grow. Even the person whose, whose faith it is doesn't know. The tree doesn't know how big it is. It only knows that it's a tree. The faithful don't know how big their faith is, just that they're faithful. And at the end, when he's, when at the, at the time of the separation, of the goats and the sheep, right? He will say to some, you did these things. And as you did, when do we do these things? Well, as you did them, you did them to me. As you did it to the, to the weakest of my brothers, you did it to me. When did we feed you when you were hungry? When did we give you drink when you were thirsty? When did we visit you when you were sick? As you did it to the least of my brethren, you did it to me. You don't even know it. Not even know it. And he spoke to them with many such parables. It is the Spirit that guides the understanding of these things. If you read these, if you read these without the guidance of God's Spirit, they're just parables. The surface. When they cross the sea, they get into the boats, Jesus goes to the back and sleeps because he's been... Most, most boats had a pad, a pad or a pillow at the, at the, in the stern, at the back of the boat where it's the calmest, uh, so that you could take a rest, you know, so that the sailors could rotate in and out as need be, or the fishermen could rotate as need be, because uh, sometimes they're out there for days. Um, but Jesus has been preaching all day, and he's tired. And believe me, any pastor can tell you that preaching makes you tired. And so he goes back to rest. And the wind comes down off of the Golan Heights onto the Sea of Galilee and raises up. And these storms there come without any notice. Just boom, there they are. And the, the, the sea becomes violent, violent and uh, the people are shaken. Um, and the, the, the men who, and remember, these are not, these are not newbies, right? I mean, we're, we've got Peter and John, uh, James and Andrew, these are fishermen. They've, they've grown up their whole life on the Sea of Galilee. They know what this is like. Um, and yet they are, I mean, this is a violent sea. Um, and they go and wake Jesus and say, are you, are you not concerned that we're perishing? Jesus is concerned that we're perishing. That's why he came. That we're perishing because of the sin that's within us. That's why he came. He came so that he could perish for us, that he could give his life for us and keep us from dying. That by the blood shed on the cross, our sins would be forgiven and we would be reconciled to our Father and in him have eternal life. Yeah, they're perishing in the boat. They're not going to die. Jesus is on the boat. This is not where he dies. He stands and Drawing upon his divine nature, the human nature speaks and says, "Peace, be still," and the waters stop. And it, you know, it's not a, it's not a dying down. The wind ceased, and the waters didn't rock to a steady. They became still, right? It's all at once, a great calm. Why are you so afraid? He says, "Are you? Have you still no faith? Is your trust still?" in yourself and the world, or is it in Christ? <laughs> Paul says, if God is with us, who can stand against us? It's faith that gives us comfort. It's faith that gives us strength. It's faith that clings to the promises of the cross in Christ Jesus. It's, it's that faith that even as death draws near upon us, as it does for all at some point, we can wait patiently for our Lord to come, trusting that even though we die, yet shall we live. 
in Christ Jesus. Not because we did something good, but that because he died and rose again, and we are baptized into his death, and so also into his resurrection, the promise of eternal life. He is the one whom even the sea and the wind obey. Amen. We'll look to our prayer of the day and then go on to our Lenten catechesis for today. Blessed Lord, since you have caused all Holy Scripture to be written uh, for our learning, grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Lenten Catechesis uh, today, the fifth and sixth commandments, uh, again, looking at the large catechism, uh, the fifth commandment, you shall not murder. The entire sum of what it means not to murder is to be impressed most clearly upon the simple-minded. In the first place, we must harm no one, either with our hand or by our deed. We must not use our tongue to instigate or counsel harm. We must neither use nor agree to use any means or methods by which another person may be injured. Finally, the heart must not be ill disposed toward another or wish another person ill in anger and hatred. Then body and soul may be innocent toward everyone. But especially toward those who you wish you, who wish you evil or inflict such things upon you. It is God's ultimate purpose that we let harm come to no one but show him all good and love. He would remind us to reflect upon the first commandment. He is our God, which means he will help, assist, and protect us in order that he may quench the desire of revenge in us. The sixth commandment, you shall not commit adultery. The last five commandments begin by talking about our neighbor personally, then they proceed to talk about the person nearest him or the closest possession next after his body, namely his wife. She is one flesh and one blood with him. So that we cannot inflict a higher injury upon him in any good that is his. Therefore, it is clearly forbidden here that to bring any disgrace upon our neighbor regarding his wife. Among us, there is such shameful mess and the very dregs of all vice and lewdness. The sixth commandment is directed against all kinds of unchastity, whatever it may be called. Not only is the outward act of adultery forbidden, but also every kind of cause, motive, and means of adultery. Then the heart, the lips, and the whole body may be chaste and offer no opportunity, help, or persuasion toward inchastity. Not only this, but we also must resist temptation, offer protection, and rescue honor wherever there is danger and need. To speak in the briefest way, everyone must live chastely himself and help his neighbor to do the same. That's our catechesis for today from the large catechism, the fifth and sixth commandments. Uh, let's uh, continue then with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray, as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give to us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Thursday morning, we continue to pray here from this little orders of prayer that I have here. 
once I get to the Thursday page. My uh, Lord Jesus, by your regenerating grace given in baptism, you have made me a new creature through your redeeming blood. I confess to you, searcher of hearts, that in me also, that is in my sinful flesh, dwells all manner of evil thoughts, wicked desires, and sinful wishes. This evil is with me constantly and tarnishes my best efforts to do your will. It plagues my conscience with guilt and shame. I come to you this morning confessing my own weakness and asking you for the sake of your suffering and death to forgive me, to overlook my shortcomings, and to help me in my daily struggle against the old sinful nature. Do not let my flesh direct my thoughts and actions. Lovingly strengthen me so that I can daily put off the old man and all that he works against me, and put on the new man born in baptism and created after you in righteousness and holiness. Daily make me purer in my desire, cleaner in my speech, and holier in my action, so that I may be blameless in your sight and a shining light in the world until you call me home to perfection. This I ask in your most holy name. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we continue to pray for those who have asked for our prayers, especially Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, Ashley, John, Renee, Shazad, Holden, Char, and all those who call upon your most holy name. Grant them comfort, assurance, and strength where you can healing if it is according to your good and gracious will, and always the reminder of eternal life through your Son, who is our Lord. In his name we pray. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things on this day, when the work of our calling begins anew, we ask you to uh, direct its continuance, bless its end, that all our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our devotions for this Thursday morning to a close. God's peace be with you. We'll see you back here on Friday as I prepare to venture forth to the north part of the North Woods in Hershey. God's peace, and we'll see you back here on Friday morning.